Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we give you all the praise. Jesus, we thank you because you've helped us to pray today. Oh, Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father, because you have been faithful to us in life class. You've poured out so much of your blessing upon us. Father, we are grateful. Lord Jesus, as we are about to move into the class for today, Lord, we ask for mercy and for grace. That as we go into the class, Lord, you will pour out your oil upon us in the name of Jesus. That there will be an outpouring of your spirit and your blessing in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will help us to align our thought and our heart with the blessing you designed for us today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, Father, Haruk FM Sunita, that as we go into the class, Father, that you would help me tonight even to play the role of a, of a preparer, that tonight uh, I would be able to add to what your servant has been teaching, has been flowing in, in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you will pour out your spirit upon me, even to, 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 to speak concerning even the spirit, soul, and body, tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask for help. Let there be help, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, Panami Afenesorakai. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, our Father. Jesus, I thank you. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. It's good to say amen. 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 Please amen. Say amen. 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 Thank you. You know, we've been praying, even though I'm okay hearing my own voice. Uh, at least if you say amen, if you can, it is good to say amen. We have to understand that we are also fellowshipping together. So part of fellowshipping is hearing each other's voice and hearing and feeling each other. So mm -hmm. let's not deny ourselves, uh, our voices and our amens. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah. All right. I uh, uh, also just want to thank Pastor Ceci again for trusting me to take this class today. So like I said, I'll try my best. Uh, I will not take away from you know, what Pastor Ceci Judy does. So I would like to follow suit in one aspect, which is to get a recap. I would love for someone to please help us with recap with live class or to bless them. Uh, because I would not want to call names, so I'll just uh, trust that uh, we'll have volunteers that will be able to volunteer and hear the the messages in pieces. Well, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just to help us get a recap quickly what blessed us from the last time. If I can get uh, a volunteer, that would be great. Pastor, so welcome to the sir. Good evening. Oh, the oh, I will try and go. Ah, we're so we're slow. You are the one that <laughs> gave the cap last week, so okay, no uh, problem. <laughs> I'll try my best. Uh, I'm not too sure, you know. Unless I'm not too sure, I'll, I'll cover everything. That's I'll just God blessed me, and maybe that can help um whoever would go after me. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank, um, you. thank you for yielding. Thank you, sir. Um, Pastor Ceci, um, he started off by, I, I think he, last week, he didn't start off with a manual. He still wanted to um, emphasize the importance of the spirit more. 
Oh, I don't know if I'll say the importance of it. Oh, he wanted to, let me use the word, he wanted to make us really see our, the the glory. Let me use that word. I'm so sorry, sir. Let me use the word. He wanted to make, make us understand or see the glory of our spirit man. And we started from Ephesians chapter 2. But let me just go up because he also went, he also spoke on Ephesians chapter 1. When he, sorry, sir, let me just quickly open my Bible. So after that, you can you receive the um spirit of the government. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, sir. No problem. No problem. Efficient, efficient. Yes. I'll just start from 13, 1, 13. See, in whom he also trusted. After that, he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after, after that you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, okay. which is the earnest of our inheritance until redemption of the possessed position unto the praise of his glory. But we started to see that the our spirit man is not just um the glory of the spirit man is also that the Holy Spirit is in it. Mm. Let me let me say that because in Ephesians chapter three you would see um that you be strengthened in mind by his spirit, which is in the inner man. That is just that is just um giving an example, like a scriptural example. But we are seeing that the word, the exact word for success he used was that our spirit man is the seat of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So and and the Bible here says that we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So he he said we should not um downplay one of the things he was saying is that we should we should not downplay our spirit, you know, that most times people say um, that we are soul, like man is a soul, but no, man is actually a spirit. And if we know um, who we are or what we are in the spirit realm, then there's a way we will be living our daily lives because we are carrying not only is our spirit Christ, mm -hmm. which Christ is not of this world, um, Christ is of the world to come, but also we are we are also carrying the Holy Ghost in our spirit. So it's almost it's almost the you know let me just say two you know just a combo, but a glorious combo. Let me use that word. Yes. And I went he went down um in helping us to understand. I, I know he used this scripture, but he also stated that you can teach it from down up. That was the word he used. But he said that we, we need to know the exceeding... No, he started from 18, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of, of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Mm -hmm. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, which he wrought in Christ when he raised up Christ from the dead. So he was saying that there was something glorious there was something very powerful that was wrought in us when we were quickened when because we had a dead spirit before which he likened to the body of sin from romans chapter six sorry i'm jumping back okay it's okay but yes um so he, he likened our spirits to the body of sin mm -hmm. and he said um that there was something that happened when we were quickened and he said it's an exceeding great power that that quickened our spirit and not only, like I said, that our spirit was speaking, but that the Holy Ghost also lives in us. And he made us to also understand that if you go to chapter two, when it says, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. He says the spirits are now working in the children of disobedience. So he said, um, every when you see a soul moving, a soul is moving by his spirit. That was what he was trying to do. So he, he, he made us to see that we can, because we have a new spirit, which is, which is the, the new spirit, let me just put it that way, you know, which is not the, which is not the old spirit, which is not the body of sin. But if I can say the opposite, the body of life, that we can also, we can also move or live by that spirit and not by this by the um, prince of the power of the air, which is also a spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience. So he used all the scriptures to, <laughs> to teach that. And he made us see that in every spirit there is a life. And in I think he went to Romans chapter 8 when he said, um, 
that the law of the spirit of life, which is in yes. Christ Jesus, had made us free from the law of sin and death. So we see that there is a law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. So he said that in every spirit that there is a law. And man ought, as we as men, you know, our soul has to live by something. So we have to learn to live by the life of our spirits. That was what yes. he was. I believe that that was what he was trying to make us see. And um, I think he also he also went back to that second first Corinthians chapter two, I believe, when he says that what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him. And he said that the things, those things are are not, you know, our physical things. It's not, you know, you I be, I believe you know, that you know you can you can get informations from your spirit concerning, you know, things here. But he, he said that the things of your spirits, those things are life things. So that's why we need to understand that our spirit is, is very, very important. And mm. I believe he, he also said in Romans chapter 8 that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants he are to whom he obey, mm. I believe, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. I believe that's what that scripture says. But yes, um, he, he so he said that they, that we we have to learn to yield ourselves to the new man, but our spirit man or the body, not the body of the old spirit, but you know, that spirit that has been regenerated, that has been quickened. So we need to learn to always yield to that spirit. And um I'll stop this, sir. Uh, for I'm sorry, I I, I know I didn't cover everything, but uh, so, ah, but uh, thank blessed you me. so much. You you helped us greatly. You covered a lot. So thank you so much for for doing that. You really, really, really helped us. Thank you. So and uh, God bless you. God bless you. Um, because of time, I think I'll just move on to the lessons so i'm going to start continue from where pastor ceci stopped but um i discovered a lot of things that you know pastor said is already um part of what we're going to look into the manual so you might find me repeating the same thing that you've heard pastor ceci mentioned before maybe just in another way but it's mostly the same thing we, you know, we'll be saying. And thank you, Sir Wesley, for that recap, because that also, you know, just triggers something in uh, you know, my thought with regards to where to start today. And part of that would be to also put a little emphasis on the spirit, just to make some things, you know, clear. And I'll just move from the thought that, uh, you know, came earlier about knowing the importance of the spirit. Now, why am I saying this is because a lot of times believers, we actually a lot of times ignore our spirit, don't deal with our spirit. We deal with our soul as our spirit. And as a result, we can mix things up especially having an, having an understanding of how things flow spiritually. And I've discovered that understanding is key when it comes to spiritual development, having clarity of how things work, what is placed where, adds to the building block of every believer, which is why we must be thorough in our learning. Yes, we may not have time. I believe whatever we set our hearts to do, the Lord can help us. Because the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So the aspect of the spirit is very important and we must pay a keen attention to it so that we can give some importance to it. We can place premium just like we've heard in the recap we must learn to value our spirit and we must know that we are 
spiritual beings. We are spirit that has a soul that lives in the body. And these three aspects is what is being clarified. And so we almost know that the spirit is keen, is the most important part of a man because of what it holds. Your spirit is essential, is very important. Because your spirit has your spirit determines what your soul will be. You no, know, we've not talked about the soul yet, but of course we'll get to see that. You know, when Pastor Sessi comes back, we'll get to you know learn more about the soul. Uh, I'm not sure if I will even finish this aspect of the spirit today, but I'm just hoping that by God's grace, uh, whatever I lead to, I'm able to add. Uh, it's going to be a blessing to each and every one of us. So we should give emphasis or import, uh, credence to our spirit. Why should we do that? Partly because, one, if anything is going to come to man when it comes to the inheritance of God, it has to come through your spirit even though your soul has a role to play eventually your body but our spirit our spirit is very essential it's like if you have riches for a child and you know that this riches is kept somewhere maybe in a chest or in a safe and the child can only get to enrich their own bank if they have access to these riches that is kept somewhere. You know, you know, you know a child can have their own bank but don't have access to inheritance, right? Speaking, speaking naturally. Now, the chest of wealth, riches of God's things is actually kept in our spirit. Just we've seen that is an exceeding great power that resides in our spirit. Imagine something great enough to hold the spirit of God in our heart, in our lives. That's the sense I'm getting. Imagine that because our spirit is where the Holy Ghost dwells. It doesn't dwell in the soul, neither does it stay in the body. The only place the Spirit of God can dwell is in our spirit. So if the Holy Ghost is in you, or you say God is in you, right? Like Pastor Ceci would always say, inside me, Yahweh is inside me. Uh -huh. You see, Yahweh is God, right? And if it's inside us, where does it stay? Definitely not the soul. Definitely not the body. And there's a reason for that. The soul, because of its present state, cannot hold God's house. Eventually, it will. Depending on how much we yield to the Lord. right? And so also is our body, because our body will be changed on the last day. However, what is essential in achieving that of the soul being fully saved and that of the body, for that to occur, for that to happen, our spirit plays an important role because it is what is holding a great power. Power for salvation, right? As the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 17 will say, can we open that scripture, please? It says, for therein, let's read from 16, actually, says that, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Panacella. So we see here that the 
in this verse, it says that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for there it is the power of God. Now, unto salvation. It means that the great power inside of us has a goal. It is for salvation. Now, one thing we know is that our Christ, our spirit, sorry, is Christ. So we need that when they are preaching the gospel of Christ to our soul, right? because they don't preach to your spirit, they preach to your soul. It what bears witness with that gospel is our spirit because that gospel is in your spirit. Once you are born again, all that is all that the gospel of Christ is going to design is already in your spirit. That's why we don't play with it, we don't joke with it. Imagine all of salvation program, right? It's dependent on you having that new spirit. That is required. And we must understand now, the, the other part that we don't get is that a lot of times we assume that the spirit that is recreated or the spirit that is quickened is the old one that fell, that they refurbished. But this is not so. And this should put confidence in a lot of hearts. Why? Because you have a great blessing inside of you. You just may not know it. You have a great blessing, which is your recreated spirit, which is quickened, right? According to the nature of Christ. That is something powerful. Imagine, just look inside of you and see, I have Christ inside of me. It may not show yet. I may not know what yet I will be, but I know when Christ shall appear, I would be like him. You know that in your spirit, you have resources. You have the possibility. You know, a lot of time, uh, you know, Satan speaks impossibilities to our soul. That see all this thing they are preaching. See all this thing they are, they are talking about. How on a halima, all the salvation that they are talking about. You can't achieve it. You can't measure up. Why? You've been trying to do the same thing. Over and over and over and over again, but you keep failing. So definitely, just forget about it. It is impossible. You know, a lot of this also happened to men in the past when they've tried and tried that. You know, they tried to stop. They tried, uh, you know, stopping men from fornicating. They realize that nah, they can't stop it. You try stopping women from fornicating. They can't stop it. Like, ah, you know what? It is well. We cannot be perfect in this life. All our all our righteousness is like filthy garment. That's men giving up. And it's Satan that has taught men to give up on life, right? But we should put a lot of premium on our spirit. Now, one thing I want us to understand is that our spirit is not refurbished. I'm retreating that. And forgive me, like I said, I may be saying a lot of things. And you know, as I'm saying them, it, will just, it might cover a lot of things we have in the manual. And because of that, I may speed up a bit depending on how the flow goes. But I, I try the Lord to help us to just, you know, touch on, on things. Amen. So we see here that uh, for the spirit, there's something we must know about it. Is that it is our spirit, Right that is recreated it means you have a brand new spirit honestly every single time i think about this it baffles me myself how come i have a new spirit what happened to my old spirit shouldn't i have memory loss shouldn't i have spirit loss because the old one is gone and the new one is there Somehow I'm tied to the to the old one because you know that's where before I gave my life to Christ I've been living. Where did all that go? Right, it's a question, but <laughs> the truth is that it's only Scripture that can answer that. Now, because when it comes to recreating the spirit, there's a whole lot we don't know about that. When it comes to making of spirit, there's a whole lot we don't know about that. Why? Because it would take it would take a light higher 
a milk light, even Christ light to actually canufa kato sesemenefa to understand that. That particular aspect of spirit recreation. Imagine a spirit that is dead, but because it's dead does not mean it is gone, right? Because as we were learning, we understand that that is what they call the old man. The old man is this old spirit. I like that because we have old and new. Old and new. Old man, right, is the spirit. But I thank God, oh, we are not talking about this, so I would have loved to talk in a little bit about this, but the, the insight there is, you know, I believe we'll learn it, but I'll just mention it a little, is that, see, as you have the old man, and you have the new man, both of those old men can install their nature in the soul such that you can have an old soul which is being renewed. Meaning you are taking away all the deposit of the old life away. You are removing the conversation of the old man from the soul and you are restoring the conversation of the new man or you are bringing the new conversation of the new man to the soul so the soul is actually a place to pour to see but there's still a lot of things we will still learn about the soul too right because that particular aspect is very interesting but what we are focusing on is the spirit right so as i'm saying what i want us to understand is when we are born again what is recreated is our spirit and we should have this understanding. If it takes saying it one billion past phenomena, one billion times, saying it over and over to yourself, say it until you get to, and until your heart believes it. That you don't have an old spirit, you have a new one. There's no memory of death in your spirit. It is there's no memory of old life in your spirit because. It is, it does your, your new spirit does not know it. What's your new spirit? What's your spirit now that is recreated? When I say new spirit, let's know that I'm talking about the recreated and the quickened spirit, right? The recreated spirit and the quickened spirit at new birth, right? And how it occurs is through faith in death and resurrection of Christ, right? Once his soul believes that Jesus died and he rose up from the dead, yes, they are born again. Right? And once they are born again, the next or what happened immediately after being born again, Kufanata is that their spirit is recreated. It's like even press delete. And when they press delete for that spirit, they didn't put it in recycle bin. So they deleted it. Not simple delete or soft delete, what software people will call, will call soft delete. You know, a lot of things now have soft delete. For example, your pictures on your phone, when you delete them, they don't actually delete right away. That's what you call soft delete. It actually goes into a folder such that if you choose between, because they give 30 days before it's deleted permanently. If you so choose between 30 days, you can take it back and put it back where you deleted it from. Now, if the Lord has done that to our spirit, it means that the Lord wants us to the Lord wants us to be dying, right? Just like Israel, they left Egypt. The moment the the place was difficult, the wilderness was difficult. They're like, can we just return back to Egypt? At least we were eating good food, not cucumber. We had we had cucumber. We had we had the uh, we had meat. But here, we are just sitting manna, manna, manna. Can we please go back to Egypt? Aha, uh -huh, you know? The soul, why? Because the soul likes going to its familiar ground. So the Lord did not do a soft delete on the spirit. What the Lord did is the Lord pressed permanent delete on that old spirit. And then you have a brand new recreated 
spirit. Right, let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, we read from verse 1. It says that, And you at he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You see, you had he quickened. So when he was talking to them, that you at he quickened, he's talking about what was quickened in their person you have man you know when you are thinking about man you have to think about man the entirety of man man is spirit soul and it's one year man is those three entities you are dealing with right so when you say you have been quickened it means the spirit was quickened who was dead in trespasses and in sins that we've as we've learned the, the dead spirit right in since adam's disobedience moved into death right and it became a chamber of death right where death it became where it became a place where death leaves sleep and wakes up right where satan can store death and store all kinds of things into which can both lead the soul right as well as instruct the soul so that was what was happening to man. But you see here that they're saying that we at he quickened. So they've quickened our spirit. That's a quickening. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So we can put it side by side. Thank you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, all things are become new. All things have become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you see, he is a new creature amen and we have to understand this right it says if therefore then man be in christ this means that you are born again right christ being in you is another story entirely right if any man be in christ it means that this is a provision in christ he is a new creature our spirit is in christ our spirit is in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Now, what they are saying here, and I believe this should, this should honestly, this is some kind of encouragement to each and every one of us. Why? They're saying that old things are passed away. Imagine, it means that in your when the lord looks at the record in your spirit right because your spirit is what the lord deals with directly now that you are born again and we'll see that right partly why we should you know exalt the spirit right to see how important how important it is see the spirit aspect imagine when god looks at the record in your spirit he's not seeing any record of sin he said that spirit. He looks. So when God looks at you, what 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 it deals with the Lord is that spirit aspect. So if though you know we have sin in our soul, the Lord is not looking at that. He's just looking at your spirit. So when he sees you, he's seeing Christ. Meaning that the least the Lord wants to see you come into his Christ in your soul. That's the least. Ah, come into so don't just don't just be born again and remain there. Right? grow up i want your spirit right to give you all that you need so when the lord is looking at you he's not looking at your sin he's not looking at all your shortcomings so you'll be wondering how is it possible that with all this my fault the lord does not does not throw me into lake right away it's because when he's looking at you, he's not, what he's saying is, is 
is the promise in you that this is a potential, a potential inheritor of life. And anybody that will be a potential inheritor must be Christ. And there, where will God see the image of Christ is inside of your spirit. So when the Lord looks at you, is your spirit he sees. And we'll see because the scripture right, tells us that the spirit of man, panokarama, is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward part of the belly. That's thank you, Proverbs 2027. Tanaki Afa says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. That belly is the soul. So, they're saying that, they didn't say that the soul or the belly is the candle of the Lord, even though you can set that one on fire too. They didn't say that the belly is the candle of the Lord. They didn't say that the body is the candle of the Lord. They said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Why is it the candle of the Lord? Because is that, that's what communicates with the Lord. Your spirit is, is, is what interacts with the Lord. So if the Lord wants to come to you, where a first of all land is in your spirit, it won't land in your soul. You won't land in your body. Most importantly, because that soul and body aspect, the Lord has put something there that it can't unturn, which is why it deals solely, right, with your spirit. Thank God for that wisdom. If the God I also did the soul made it that way, right? And we all understood that in the beginning when man fell, right, because the soul... Sorry, because the spirit is dead. That is why the soul had to leave, take up the responsibility. And the Lord had no choice but to start leading them through their soul. Or to start dealing with man based on their soul. Right? How God was dealing with them, leading them in the is through their soul. And you can tell how difficult it must have been. Why? Because see, that soul thing is not easy to commune with. When you tell it so, please, can you go and do my will? So, uh, okay, I'll do it. The next moment, that's changed his mind. It's very unstable. Very, you can't trust it. God doesn't even trust it. So it means that when God is dealing with Noah, Abraham, we should see the strength within them for them to be able to follow the Lord. It means that ah, God found some strong man on the earth, a man on there that he was able to work with. Imagine, within their soul, they were able to respond to the Lord. Right? But the Lord did not design it such a way that he would just lead man through his soul. It's through his spirit. He wants to commune with man. And eventually, of course, he will impact the soul and the body. So, you now see why God could not even use the old man, which is the spirit that died, God had to recreate a new spirit after Christ, which now becomes your spirit. And see, this thing is why you should even thank God for believers. You know why? Because every believer that is a child of God is cre has their spirit recreated with the same image. <laughs> when I say image, with the same Christ. That is why we are all Christ's in our spirit. So when you are dealing with a brother, you're dealing with another Christ. Hey, the, or let me put it this way. You're dealing with somebody with that has Christ in their spirit too. Now you now know what connects you and your brethren together to that spirit. Imagine they recreated your spirit from Christ. Your brother's spirit is recreated from Christ. And how, do we, how, do we, how do we know we are all brothers and sisters? It's because you have the same blood, really. And you found your blood in Christ. This blood is thicker than water. Or thicker than blood, nat natural blood. Right. Your spirit, your spirit, your spirit is essential.
You see, Pastor Ceci was mentioning something towards the end of the class, right? Saying that, you see, that's why you don't joke with unbelievers. Especially, you know, marriage, you know, he was giving an example that time about that marriage, right? That um, aspect, he was saying that, uh, you know, there's a lady that eventually married a, you know, a guy that, you know, took her away, right? But the uh, thing to see here is that you cannot be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Why? Because your 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 you should be yoked with another person that is Christ, right? You should not be um, with an unbeliever. That is why when somebody that is a believer marries an unbeliever, what they are doing is really tying a soul that is Christ to a soul that is dead. Imagine. That, will be, that is indeed an unequal yoke. Right? It's an unequal yoke. So the Lord recreated our spirit, brand new spirit, and then he begins to deal with it. He put all of his, all of his Christ nature in the spirit. So even though we are at now, we are not all, you know, at the point where we can consider ourselves, yes, hey, we are now fully, fully you know, we are not you know, thinking about we're all fully, fully Christ, you know, that maybe we see different shortcomings. One thing is that don't look by thy sight. Look at the sight of what the Lord has done into your spirit. It's a provision, right? That is your consolation. That is your comfort. And that is also a promise that whatever it is that the Lord is dealing with you at the moment that there is a help, there is a promise which is in your spirit. So no matter what the Lord is dealing with, dealing with you on, there is a provision in your spirit to bring it to pass. So it is not impossible. But let me move further. So the spirit of man is the count of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So you see that the spirit of of man is very essential it is the most essential part of a believer it is the most essential part of a believer this that spirit very essential why because it is what the lord would use to eventually lead the soul and the body where the soul has been led to before because uh, you know we understand that that soul you know, has a lot of things inside. And thank God that the Lord is helping us to separate these things. You know, a lot of times we, can, we, 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 were, we were not able to discern the spirit and the soul. It was together. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for Papa Egin. Thank God for light. Thank God for word of righteousness. That begins to separate the difference between the spirit and the soul of man. A lot of times people mix it up before. But the way the Lord has designed it is that your spirit is what leads your soul or should lead your soul and eventually your body, right? Imagine, why will it lead it? Because it must lead it to Christ. That's what it's leading it to. Let's cap it. It must lead it to enter into Christ. As Christ is, as you are in Christ, that we've just read in that book of 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore you also should be in Christ, or Christ should also be in you, right? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. Then you see the other aspect of scripture that says that hope of glory, Christ in me. That's the book of Colossians, I believe. Chapter 3. Right. Or is, it, is it Corinthians, Colossians, or uh, Romans? It says, Hope of glory, Christ in me. So it is hope of glory, Christ in me. That's Colossians 1. I believe verse 27. We are there. So to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Christ in you, the hope of God. So we now see that there's a there's an actual difference between you being in Christ and Christ being in you. They are two different things. And scripture made us understand that there is that which is hope of glory, Christ in you or Christ in me. So it is clear there's a separation between I in Christ and Christ in me. So the purpose of recreating your spirit that is Christ is so that it can lead your soul, right? To the point that Christ is now in your soul, right? But that is a conversation, you know, ahead of this class, but just giving us insight a little bit into why they must lead your soul. So you see, this is the reason why we can't underestimate the spirit of man. You cannot underestimate your spirit. You should thank, I like this because it's putting a lot of, lot of emphasis and clarification around our understanding. You know, a lot of believers miss it, especially hearing word of righteousness, because of the explanation of the soul. A lot of times we lose sense of the spirit aspect. But what of righteousness did not come to throw away the sense of the spirit, rather, but to build on it. Because you must know all the truths about your spirit. So thank God that they are telling us the importance of our spirit. We are seeing it here. We must know the truth of our spirit. So that by the time we are journeying, right, in God, and we are beginning to see the soul much more better, it is very easy to lose sense of this part of the spirit because of the emphasis. You know, the emphasis is spirit, soul, and body. Eventually, the Lord would, you know, the body is the last thing they will change. So the spirit is addressed. Now the Lord is addressing the soul, but eventually the body is the last one. Why? At the last trump, as the last revelation of the light, that the body would also be changed. Sleep is going away. That's God's wisdom. Amen. So we see that we cannot, we are not denying the truth of what is in the body, of what is in the spirit. Right? We are not. But we are just building on it. So let, we are taking time to emphasize the truth around your spirit and my spirit. Right? So one thing we see, I'm, I'm not saying that is is a good aspect of man. So the spirit, I'm, I'm saying it is what it is the most essential part of a believer, right? They are they are saying that your soul is essential, but still not the most essential part. They are saying your spirit is the most essential part of a believer that God has ordained. See that spirit, God has ordained your spirit. To lead your soul and body. And we, you must be led though, because every every soul is a sheep. God has deal, dealt it in such a way that every man is a sheep. And every sheep must be led. Every man is a sheep. And every sheep must be led. If you're wondering, you are, you know, maybe you're wondering, why are they talking about sheep, sheep, sheep in scripture? This is why you should know it, because a man is likened to a sheep, which must be led. Notice that when sheep is changing nature, there are natures it changes to goat, dog, all those things. You notice that those ones, they are hard to, you can hardly lead a goat. You can hardly lead a dog because they have turning natures. If you are leading the goat at some point, it goes to my turn back and say, no, 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 I'm stubborn. I don't want to go this way. You know, you know a goat can refuse its owner. Owner will say, let's go. They will put rope on it. I say, let's go. A lot of time God is telling us, let's go somewhere. You and I, please, let's go. He'll be like, mm -mm, no, God, mm -mm, I'm not going. God, please, I'm not, I'm not going. Have you, have, you, have you seen that picture where maybe their owner has a tie rope on the neck? I don't know, maybe it's in movies, and then he's dragging, trying to take the goat home. The goat be like, mm, he'll be struggling with the owner. And that's how we are sometimes. Right? That is part of the nature that Satan has carved inside the soul that they need to remove. But God did not design men to be goats. God did not design men 
to be dogs. You know, dog is very tricky. There's a reason why they put dog as a as as dog. You know, that thing is likened to the soul. Why is it? Why is a dog? A dog. You know, a dog is you can't trust a dog. Why? No matter how well you train a dog, you know, after you've trained a dog today, by be listening to you. Hey, sit down, it will sit, jump up, it will jump. You even draw tail and laugh with you. Then one day you just carry hand out, you just your dog will just bite. Ah, why? Why bite? You even with discipline the dog. Why do you bite me? Even if it's owner or not stranger, it's owner. Bite it. Why? Why are you biting me? Be wondering. It's because the soul is like that, right? It can be a dog. Or let me put it this way: the actually the soul is actually a dog. It's talking about the unsteady, the untrusting nature of the soul that Satan has put. That thing that Satan has put inside souls. It destroyed the sheep nature, made it a dog. Right? So that it is it can bite its owner. That's the thing that Satan did to the soul. But you see the importance of the spirit here that God has designed our spirit to lead our soul. If it, if the soul is a dog or a goat, because of this new created spirit, it can be led back to a sheep and then it can be led back to its maker. That is the confidence we have in God, right? Seeing that this aspect of man is essential for leading back to its savior. See that our God is merciful. Our God is faithful. What a merciful and a faithful high priest. To ensure that, see, it doesn't matter how rough and how bad and rough edges his soul is. The Lord has, as long as you are born again, there's a safety for salvation. There's a promise of salvation, right? So it says here that, our spirit is something we should actually be at home with. We should give thanks to the Lord for that. Amen. Now, what are the point I am bringing out here, right, is to show us earlier that, see, that spirit is very, very important because it's what the Lord deals with directly for leading and many other things. Right, if the Lord would ever ever talk to you, where you land first is in your spirit, and guess what? The Holy Ghost is in your spirit. That's where is the seat of the Holy Ghost. That's where the Holy Ghost sits, right? And is trying to commune with you. So a lot of time, the Holy Ghost is communing with your spirit. They are just and they are talking. You, you, are, you, may, you may be even unaware. When they try to bring you on, when they try to big you, make you aware of their conversation, a lot of times we are too busy to even pay attention to it, right? But I'm just, no, I'm just creating a movie scenario here, but is it just a little insight for us to see what the Lord has done into the spirit, right? Our spirit, when he recreated it, he made sure that it can hold the Holy Ghost because it is Christ. It means that inside your spirit, there's no sin. Right? There's no sin in your spirit. Born again, Christian. Tongue talking. Right? When you are born again, let me, let me not put the other one. Let me just say, once you are born again, your spirit is recreated. God will not recreate your spirit with sin. Your spirit has no sin. It has no sin. It has no sin. Your spirit is created after Christ, it means that the reality of it is that it is that that uh, that spirit is clean. It's Christ. That's why I say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? If any man be in Christ, so if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. They didn't say old things are swept under the rug. I want us to pay attention to that word. Pass away. When something passes, it is dead. When something passes, it is gone. When it has passed on, it passed. Passed away. It is gone. It's moved. Say that passed is with speed. 
it passed away. Behold, all things are become new. They're saying all things in your spirit, all things spirit are new. All things are become new. All of it. There is nothing, re no refurbish is not new. Right? Refurbish is not new. Fixed is not new. Retouched is not new. If you repaint something, it doesn't mean it's new. When it says new, it means a brand, brand new, recreated, with new parts. Eh? If you have a new car that is brand new, it is not a car with old parts that they change the parts and make new. No, it's brand new. Cha cha, that's what they call it. Cha cha, cha ching, that's the spirit. That's what is inside, that's what you have. I'm saying this because a lot of things is going on around this, you know, a lot of understanding too, with regard to the spirit. Whereby, you know, a lot of times we just, we, we assume the way our soul is, that's the way our spirit is. So when we are dealing with the Lord and we're even thinking of our spirit, we assume it is like a sinful soul. No. It's a, some kind of assumption there. It's brand new. Meaning that your spirit will not lead you wrong. It's not try, it's trying to lead you according to Christ. This is why we should fall in love with our spirit. We are spirits. We should know that. And as a spirit, as a spirit, huh, who has a soul that lives in the body, you, are, you, you can be rest assured that you don't have a refurbished spirit. So you have a brand new one clean and it is your own when i say it's your own, means that it is in you it's not anything strange so when you are thinking about your life ah trust you can that means you can trust the spirit of god in your spirit and you can trust that your spirit can tell that can lead you aright why because the lord one thing i'm saying all this thing just give us like i said i might cover some of the things in the book but I, I, the way I'm even saying that is like the Lord is even leading us around the points one by one. I've, I'm actually talking about different points in that book. If we, if we are following, you will see. But but I'm just flowing as it is coming. So you see this aspect of the spirit, the aspect of it, the spirit being um, recreated, right? The Lord can lead it. The Lord can move it. It's a sure, it's a sure banker for you. Because it does not argue with the Lord. Right? See that aspect of your spirit that is recreated. They are saying that that spirit is also the one that is one with Christ. Meaning it is one with the Lord because it is in Christ. <laughs> if it is in Christ, it is one with Christ. It means that it's not different from what Christ is. Is one because it is created. I mean, and I know we can understand why because it is created out of Christ. It is made after. If any man be in Christ, if any man, any man, any man, that man there is the spirit. So when they refer, you know, when they refer to man, you have to know which part are they referring to. Is it spirit? Is it soul? Is it body? But here they made it clear: if any man, which have a spirit. Be in Christ he is a new creature. Why? Because the soul is not recreated. The Lord does not design the soul to be something recreatable. Right? So we know that if the soul is recreatable, then we would have a lot of loss, losses. Right? There will even, even be a need for a recreated spirit. Why? Because the Lord will just recreate the soul. Finish. Then there's no need to give birth to kids anymore. Right? Because souls can be created at will. You see? So there's a reason why the Lord makes sure that our spirit is recreated. One thing that we know for sure is that that spirit and soul is tied together a lot. The only reason why we can separate them now is because of the scripture. Because it's only the word of God that is able to divide asunder even both spirit and souls, right? And bones and marrows. It is the word of God that can divide asunder. So let me go further. What I was explaining earlier is that the spirit of man, right, is recreated anew, right? Essential because it's what the Lord would use to lead a believer, 
right? It is also the aspect of man that is one with Christ. Because of the new birth experience. We can read Ephesians chapter 2. And then, I know we read it. But let's read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. We'll just quickly read it for more insight. Thank you, Jesus. No, we should appreciate our spirit too. It's very, very essential. And like I said, I apologize. I'm not giving a lot of examples. So I'm not like a pastor. So I'm just trying to fit into his shoe. Amen. Amen. So it says this, and you at he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next. He said, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Next. Wherein among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Next says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, at Weakened us together with Christ. So by grace we are saved. He has quickened us together with Christ. This is why we can be in Christ. Because God has quickened us together with Christ. So we need to understand this, right? He has quickened us us we understand that what the lord quickened is our spirit right is a new one so he said they quickened us together with christ amen okay he had quickened us together with christ so it means that when christ was quickened we are also quickened with him Means there's provision in Christ, right, for the creation of your spirit, which if any anybody gets born again today, they come into the provision and they are quickened. Means they recreate their spirit with that of Christ. So Christ is the standard. So whenever quickening is taking place, when there's a new birth experience, you will see that it is quickened with Christ. Not anything different is with Christ, right? Which is why this aspect of man, which is the spirit, is one with Christ, because it's the same. When I say one with Christ, means is the same with Christ, right? By grace are you saved. Next verse, and has raised us up together. You see, we are raised together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I like this conversation, this scripture. You know, scripture is great. They always make it, they didn't make a mistake. They say together in Christ. All this is referring to that scripture. If any man be in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. You see, that verse 5 that we read and this verse 6 is together in a way. Right? And it's showing us that this is about the spirit, right? Made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. So we now know which part of man is sitting in heavenly places in Christ. It's not the entire man, it's the spirit, because it's the one that is recreated, one with Christ. Christ is seated in heavenly places, right? Then our spirit, when it's raised, is sit together. In Christ, so which is still tied to the uh, Second Corinthians uh, verse, right? 
That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It's tied to it. So if a man be in Christ. So this one is talking to us about every place is in Christ. So it's still it's the same location in the spirit. It's the same location, which is very important. So it means that this is about the space. So the spirit is seated together in Christ in heavenly places. Right? It is so the, all this thing is happening in Christ, is a provision in Christ. So this is about the spirit, not the soul, because it's the soul that has to have Christ in you. Right? That's the that's the other aspect of things. Christ in you is different from you in Christ. Right? Provision of you in Christ is the provision of the spirit. Amen. So we see here that because of this, our spirit. Is one with Christ, bears record with Christ. Also, it bears record with the Holy Spirit that you are God's children. If you want to know if you are a child of God, it is not in your mind you know that. It is not in your head you know that. Even though your mind played a role in giving your life to Jesus. What I mean by that is that your soul played a role in giving your life to Jesus. And we we'll understand as we, you know, go through the class, as when Pastor Ceci is teaching us about the soul, we'll see that. Because the doorway to get your soul recreated, because imagine the soul, the spirit is dead. When I, did I say so? I meant spirit, sorry. The, the doorway to get your spirit recreated is through the soul, right? Because it's your soul that here preaching to get born again, that believed. It's not your spirit that, God, that believed to get born again. It's your soul. But when you believed, the result of that believing is in your soul. It recreated your spirit. So the proof that you are born again is not in your mind. It's not in your head. It's a reality in your spirit and it's by faith. Why? Because it's, because it's not in your head. <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't see it there in your head. You have to believe it, right? Which is, means it's a believing in your, in your heart which results to the recreation of your spirit, right? And that recreation is silent. There was no gang -gang that happened. When you were born again, there was no fireworks. Ooh, yay. They are born again. <laughs> There's no firework. Silent. Almost, almost the only glimpse of sound that we got to know is that inside that, during that moment, our this thing happened. Our spirit is alive. He bore record with the Holy Ghost that you are a child of God. That's what happened to you when you got born again. And it's something you have to keep believing. Right? You have to believe that. Once you're giving your life to Christ, you are born again. Don't be confused and say, ah, no, this is, uh, you, you are born again. And you are, see this, ah, thank God for, for this. There's a thought I don't want to forget. It's still about the spirit. And the reason why is because, I know Pastor Sessi mentioned it, and I feel I should say it too, is about things, people going about, teaching doctrines now. That, has, that is now saying man is soul. And spirit is there, but man is really soul. It's a lie. Because if you believe you are soul, you would have no provision for salvation. Because salvation is not in the soul. It's in the spirit. So that lie is to actually end the work of salvation in souls. If somebody is just saying man is soul, then you won't have strength. Well, let me put it this way. Then all, all, all the at if if you look at it, all the movement to deal with sin, to deal with things, will always be strength of the soul by yourself. So you are not just so; you are a spirit. You are spirit, and as a result, you can talk to the Lord. You can your spirit bear witness with the Lord that you are His child. Your spirit bear witness. If you look into the soul and you believe you are your soul, today you believe you are a child of God, tomorrow you won't believe it. If you are so. Next tomorrow, because you feel you are a child of God, you believe you are a child of God. Then the next tomorrow, tomorrow, when you wake up, you are a child of God and evil spirits are just around trying to whisper and speak. Then you just believe, hey, I'm not a child of God today. You know that thing sets back Johnny a lot. If you know you are a child of God, as spirit, I just you just know, okay, this is wrestling. I just have to continue wrestling. Today, I'll be in the spirit. I'll be filled with the spirit. You know, every sorrow has a, has, has a solution. 
the solution is being filled with the spirit <laughs> you have to be filled amen but uh let me move further uh from there sorry for a little this little digress digression i digressed a little bit but the 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 importance of what i want us to see is here is that it is our spirit that's how you know that you're a child of god right he bears record with the holy ghost let's go to the house of enema romans 8 16 our spirit bears record bears witness with the holy ghost that you are his children you are god's children it bears it bears witness so the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit sakano harmafa capital s the spirit which is the holy ghost itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god you see right see, ah, fam, thank you for our spirit you see this thing our the spirit the holy ghost bear witness why is the spirit not bearing witness with your soul because it says the spirit itself bear witness i understand that english but there's something i'm saying so the spirit bears witness with our spirit. It means sakano faram. It means <laughs> there's a witness in the Holy Ghost. And there's that same witness in your spirit. When the two align, the spirit is bearing witness in your spirit. So the spirit itself bear witness. When it's bearing witness, it's, it's bearing witness with a record in your spirit that knows that you are a child of God. So there's an information in your spirit. There's an information in the Holy Ghost. When it collides, it, it, the result is the bearing of witness. It bears witness with your, this Holy Ghost bear witness with your spirit. So it means that you can never know that you are a child of God in your soul without the Holy Ghost. You can never know you are a child of God. So if you are looking for evidence that you are born again or a child of God, you don't look into your soul. It's your spirit you look into because that's the provision, right? So your spirit, the Holy Ghost bears witness with your spirit. They are God's child. Tomorrow, if something happened and your, your mind is trying to tell you, you know, you're not child, you're not God's child today. Just look into your spirit. You will see answer there quickly to tell you, hey, you know you're a child of God. Why? Because inside that you have record. You know, Satan likes blocking that area. Whenever you are overwhelmed, whenever you feel you are you're not growing, whenever things happen, you just quickly overshadow that area and then just pull all weight on your feeling. And then you start following the feeling. Hey, I'm not a child of God today. Hey, I'm sad. I'm not. I'm not a believer today. But it's not true. There's just a. There's a. There's a phase. Satan is trying to lie to you to keep believing the lie to not even check your spirit because the moment you check your spirit, you know the Holy Ghost will quickly bear witness with your spirit. Hey, you are a child of god you see that's the provision of our spirit you see that's why we cannot underestimate the spirit we must see this thing we are exalting the spirit of man to see the important work that it's doing because if we don't a lot of things that we are doing spiritually would would, would lack meaning we will not literally understand a lot of things because all the provision of your spiritual work that your soul needs to go through, there's a provision in your spirit. Imagine if the Lord is going to lead you. Remember, Papa Egan told us, right, that the primary way God has decided he will lead his children, you know, as sheep, he will lead his children is through the inward witness. Where inward witness is, is in your spirit. That inward witness is a witness, right? Inward witness is a witness. And I believe it's also a witness with the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost is talking, he's talking to your spirit, your spirit knows. No, that's why we should, we, should, we should trust our spirit. Why? Because your spirit is not a mental thing. Your spirit knows what you don't know. Your spirit knows what you don't know. What your soul don't know, your spirit knows it. And it's true. Why? If your spirit is Christ... And the soul is not yet Christ. It means the soul, the spirit knows what the soul don't know. The spirit know Christ. The soul may not. That's one. Two, your spirit, when it now comes to occurrence of things around you. What I've just said about Christ now is just about your spiritual journey, your spiritual uh, uh, profession. But when we now move into just your everyday life, your spirit knows a lot 
that your mind and heart do not know. When you say heart and mind, you know that's your soul. Because those are major regions of your soul. We'll learn about that. We'll also learn about that in the soul aspect of this class. You see here that your spirit knows what your mind and heart do not know. So when you are trying to go about your day and your spirit is, you know, a lot of times, ah, I thought, thank you, my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to just put a little emphasis on this aspect. This, this, this aspect of your spirit knows what your mind doesn't know. I want to, ah, I hope God will help me tonight to describe this because it's very essential. You know, a lot of this is, a lot of things, you know, the, the, these things we have to clarify them because when we don't know them, we miss out on truth. See, when your spirit is leading you or when your spirit is talking to you, you know your spirit does not always talk like a loud voice. Hey, Jide, don't go to Allen Avenue today. Hey, Jide, don't go to Fourth Street. Don't go to Bronson Street today. Hey, Jide, don't go, don't go to Osborne Street today. You know, a lot of time we expect our spirit to be talking like that. A lot of time, your spirit doesn't open mouth. It's a feeling inside you. You just, just peek in. It's, if, if you've been paying attention, you will know it. When your spirit is talking to you, it, it's as if it talked, but it didn't talk. How? You just know. That's the best way I can say. You just know. Your spirit is saying, Go imagine when you maybe you are cooking and you thought just you just realize that your heart is just going to us go and cook or go and pick salt. You didn't hear anything talk to you, you just realize that your heart is going to us go and pick salt. That's your spirit talking to you. And I have to be careful here too because you know we can be extreme about it and start hearing all kinds of spirit here. So here we have to be very careful. I'm just trying, I'm not giving a formula. Now, because spirit, they, they sit on formula. Evil spirit, they sit on it. If somebody gives you formula, now, if you want to know, sit down, uh, raise up your leg, and then heaven will come down. What is going to happen is that you are going to be opened to evil spirit, and you think that the spirit of God. That's why formula giving is not something. What, we, what you see that the Lord encourages is talking about experiences. Because when you talk about experience, it can impact. Act, take, and insight into souls, but it's not given as a formula. Also, you know, when we hear experience or we are hearing examples, a lot of time the way we also pick our sense around them is ah, this is how they, what they said. We we read it like formula. Let me go and copy and paste. Hold on, no, be careful about that. When you hear experience, the what you should look for inside that is the spirit inside the experience. Means that what is the spirit pouring? From that experience, because it can be an impartation of life. I know certain matter, hell now. You see, now when I'm saying these things, it's just I'm talking from experience. A lot of time, maybe I'm going out, and I, what sometimes the way my spirit would talk, talk to me is, it would just point out to me, you forgot your wallet. Your wallet. It, it, it would just occur to me, my wallet. So it's almost like something, it's just like a reminder. Hey, it's like I'm not with my wallet too. When I check, I don't have it with me. It may not like categorically say, go and pick your wallet. No, it just comes like your wallet. It's just like a knowing. Ah, my wallet is not with me. It's, it didn't even say your wallet is not with you. It's just your wallet. It's just a sense of my wallet. I'm just, okay, ah, my wallet. Okay, I'll check. It's not there. Ah, I have to go. Then I'll go home and I'll go and pick it. And you now guess what? What the Lord actually, what my spirit actually want me to get. It's not the wallet. I'll be so shocked. Because maybe around it or something, I'll just see what the my spirit is actually instructing me. Oh, this is it. And I realize, oh, so if I don't have this thing, I will miss this. Ah, but the wallet is why my spirit is trying to hint me, to stop me on an action. Right? That's just an example. But just trying to describe it. The feeling how when your spirit is talking to you, it's not like one huge audible voice. It can be a feeling. It can be a... When I say a feeling, it's not a feeling of so, the way you feel sorrow or the way you feel sadness. Mm -mm. It's a feeling that is it's a word that is like feeling. 
The feeling will be speaking to you. The feeling will be, can be, like I said, your wallet. The feeling can be, hey, you forgot to turn off the light. The feeling can be feeling about forgetting. To, you know, it, it's a feeling that talks. It's not a, it's not a, a it's not an emotional feeling. And as well, it's a feeling that talks. You know, emotional feeling does not talk. Emotion is just emotion. <laughs> I'm sad today. I'm happy. Yay. Those are emotions. But that's not how your spirit, your spirit is not a, it's not an emotion. It's a, it's a, it's a voice that is like, it's a feeling that is like a voice that gives you a sense. You know, like Papa Egan described it. You know, this, the feeling of your spirit is like when you're wearing a wet socks. When your spirit is trying to talk to you, it's like wearing a wet, just give you an, it can give you an eerie feeling like that. Like mm -mm, something is off. Sometimes, the, sometimes it can be a feeling of restraint. Like you're about to do something. Like it's like it's trying to hold you. It's a feeling of restraint, being restrained. Literally, you can in your heart. You can actually, you may actually feel like you are being restrained in your heart. Right? Sometimes your spirit is like that. I don't know why I'm talking like this today, right? But I just felt maybe I should clarify a little things about that. When we, I mean, this, you know, the the man who talked to us about leading right through our spirit. But to move on, I think I've said a little bit about that. But I just wanted to tell us about the importance of our spirit, right? And also a, a little sense on on just knowing a little bit about how your spirit talks to you, right? And one thing that I also can kind of matter for now, I will say regarding that, is that every believer must learn to yield to the voice of your spirit. The more you do that, the more easy it is to live a spiritual life, to walk with the Lord, because you realize that a lot of deliverance can, will come through that. If we are not yet practicing that, keep practicing it. I'm not saying it will get better in one day, but the more you practice listening. Now, one thing that happens is that naturally we don't tend to yield to our spirit is because of the goat nature too. That goat nature, stubborn. When our spirit is in us, a lot of times we ignore it. But what eventually happens is that we end up in trouble. The reason why our spirit is doing that is because it, your spirit knows something you don't know. So why you are, I guess that's the point we are emphasizing. So the Lord has brought us back to that. Your The reason why your spirit, you know, gives you a hint to talk to you is that he knows a lot you don't know. Your spirit has a world of it. And the Lord made it like that. You know, if it was it's so easy, you, you, you'd be able to read what your spirit knows. And and then it's okay, your spirit, your, my spirit knows about this. And then you just get, you know what will happen if, if we're able to just read what our spirit knows with our, from our mind? Is that we'll not, there will not be any need for leading anymore. And if there's no need for leading, how can we be led into Christ? And then Christ into us. How would that happen? So you now see the need for leading. So the Lord intentionally did that with that. The way you must deal with your spirit is that you must learn with your soul, discipline it to hack into the voice of your spirit. And it, that interaction must be by faith. It will never be by, I know it. It is always by anything. Check it. When your spirit is why you because you look at things not seen, your spirit is seen it, your soul is not, even though your soul is spiritual. So when your spirit is talking, is hinting, is restraining, is encouraging, yield to your spirit. So this is also an encouragement. See, you will not every believer will not have a prospering spiritual life if you don't learn to pal with your spirit. When I say pal, I mean be friends with it. When it talks, believe it quickly. Why? Because when we are not friends with our spirit, a lot of things can happen in our soul. Satan can lie a lot. Then souls can be on, on can be wavy, can be shaky, right? It can be up and down. But when you learn to, it becomes easy for your pastor to pastor you, for the Lord to pastor you. It becomes it, everything just becomes easy when you are pal with your spirit. And you being empowered with your spirit does not mean you will be happy every single day. You know, there's a picture we, we see about 
you know, how many people, I mean, now we must be, I'll just be happy every day. There will never be any sadness. Oh my God, I'll just be floating upon water. No, it's not like that. You are in a battle zone. Every day you are alive, you are ready to war. So, don't expect that because you are piled with your spirit, it's just going to be all. But one thing you can be rest assured of is victory. When you pile with your spirit, it means that you would align with God's will. You would align with God's will for your life. Amen. So, what I'm been, I've been emphasizing is that our spirit knows what we don't know. It knows what, most importantly, what your mind and your heart do not know, your spirit knows it. And don't be afraid to launch into such experience of just trusting your spirit. If there's anything to trust, you can trust your spirit. Don't see, if you, your soul is not something to trust to. What you trust is your spirit. But thank God that they're going to teach us a lot about us so that we can see some of the things that we can't trust. You don't trust your emotions. Emotion can lie. There are all kinds of things that is in the soul. And I just discovered too that you can't even trust your own will. See, will is inside the soul. You can't trust it, but you, you have to be serious about it, right? But the thing is that it is God that 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 work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God that work in you. So you don't trust what you trust is your spirit. Because you can be rest assured that the Lord would lead you from your spirit. So you, what you trust in your spirit, your spirit knows more than you think it does. Your spirit knows about the spiritual resources coming to you. Your spirit knows about your leading to life. Your spirit knows all of that. So learn to trust your spirit, not your mind. You, you, when you begin to trust your spirit, you realize that it's always giving you information that your mind does not necessarily all the time agree with. Sometimes he agrees with it, sometimes he doesn't. But one thing you will know is that the Lord, ah, thank God for the Lord Jesus, because he has done such a great work that if you are sincere and just want to know and work with your spirit, you can do that easily without any issues. You can do that. It's not, that's not, we should not overcomplicate our work with the Lord. You know, sometimes we like being spooky. That's where a lot of our problem comes from. Once we move into freedom of the spirit, simplicity, you realize that a lot of things is actually easy to discover in the spirit. Is What is just required is a meek and a contrite heart and a teachable spirit. Once we have that, it's easy for the Lord to walk in us. Amen. Pani helfarana helmandian. Halafena hemtani kanama. So me fanata. So, oh, so, so, so. D. The emphasis. Okay, let me put it this way. You now realize that without our speech, it's actually almost impossible to walk with the Lord. I'm saying almost just to make it, make it mild. Really, without your spirit, you can't walk with the Lord because your spirit is the handle of the Lord that God will use to search all your inward parts, means to lead you. We're back to Proverbs 20, 27, right? Your, the spirit is the handle of the Lord. So without your spirit, you cannot really walk with the Lord because when the Lord, thank God I'm here now, I'll be able to explain it further, your spirit, right, is the interface between the Lord. Like I've said, your spirit is, is where the Holy Ghost dwells. But it's also the interface between the Lord, between God and you. So when the God is coming, it lands in your spirit. Why? Because your spirit is his candle. It's what the Lord has designed to. It's visiting man where, you know, the, the, you know the scripture is talking about the heart of man. The heart of man is desperately wicked. So who can know it? You know, the scripture is very particular. It says, who can know it? Who can know it? Amen. 
He says, who can know it? Let's read that verse actually. The art of man in a soma is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm. Our Bible, okay. I'm going to look okay, and they found it. I was saying you're not because I don't I don't have much time. I have a little time. There's a scripture in my my heart that I think I should also that aligns with this is in the book of Corinthians. Uh I believe for what man knoweth the spirit of man, say for what for what know this uh, don't worry, let me not rush. I remembered it, the verse. But let me read this one first. So the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you see here that they are talking about the heart, right? It's deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, they are talking about the discerning of the heart. This heart is the soul. Now, let's not forget that Proverbs 20, 27 is talking about the, 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 the candle of the Lord, right? It's the spirit. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Or you can also say searching all the inward parts. Or searching all the inward Searching all the inward parts of the heart and mind. If I say belly, searching all the inward parts of the heart and mind. And then that Jeremiah 17 is telling us, verse 9, that the heart or the belly is deceitful above all things. You see? The belly is deceitful above all things. This thing, this thing, this thing. You now see how the Lord does not trust us in the belly or the soul. The Lord does not trust it. Why? Because it is deceitful above all things. It says, and desperately. It says, who can know it? Yes. There's a, there's a, there is a, uh, a mute so there's a there's a sound i'm hearing you can please check our mute buttons uh, i'm hearing a cry uh -huh. so yeah i think it's coming from uh auntie Fe. but okay sorry about that sorry it can help us mute the uh sound Amen. So it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately we can who can know it. See, they're even saying that, look, oh, if you trust your soul, your soul does not know your soul. But they are telling you that there is something that can know it. I just use the word something, but there is your spirit. So the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately who can know it. Because the spirit is the candle of the Lord. It's the candle, it's the light. Your soul can deceive your spirit. Your spirit knows all the inward parts. He knows all the secret. He knows everything. Every single aspect of your soul, the spirit knows it. That's what the scripture says. And you see why your spirit and the spirit of the Lord has to partner together. It's in that, uh, you know, when you say that the Holy Spirit dwells, in your spirit, there's a reason why they have to partner together. There's an important reason. It's because the spirit of God knows God and your spirit knows you. Imagine if the spirit that knows God and the spirit that knows you come together. It means there's a certainty of knowing of the Lord in your spirit and in your soul. There's a certainty of knowing the Lord for you. But let's read that. See, see the heart is deceitful. Above all things, there's believe we get. Who can know it? Now let's see who can know it. Let's go to the book of uh, Second Corinthians. Okay, let's it says in just that Jeremiah seventeen says, "I, the Lord, search the ah." Thank you, thank you. You are in the spirit. Now I was going to move because of speed. I, I'm going to end quickly, but I think this is important because it, it, it helps us understand that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, right? It says, "I, the Lord, search the heart." You see that Proverbs twenty twenty seven is telling us that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, right? Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Then Jeremiah 70 tells us, I, the Lord, search the heart. You see, search the belly. I tried the rain. The rain is in the heart too. Sweet is part of the belly. 
even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You see, the Lord, he searches the heart. How? Through your spirit. Because your spirit knows you. What spirit knoweth the things of man? Say it, the spirit. What, what knoweth man? Say the spirit. Let's go there. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Say, for what man? You see, I like the word, what man. He's not saying for who. If he's saying who, you think is outside you. No. For what man? You see, what man? What they are telling you is out of spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Out of that, it is not who. For what man? What that means is that, so forget about anybody else outside man himself, knowing man. If your neighbor thinks they know you, they don't know you yet. Too. They just know what they are seeing. Say, so for what man knoweth the things of a man? So they're not talking about you. Inside of you, spirit, soul, and body, which aspect of this knows the man? They're saying that, for what man knoweth the things of man? Save the spirit of man, which is in him so this statement means this that number one no man apart i mean man outside you can know the things of you save your spirit even when they now, when they now move into you as a man spirit soul and body none of the soul or the body knows the things of man even the soul is still shocked about things inside it inside it every single day Sometimes, you know, maybe you see something inside of you, you're like, yay, this thing is still here, Father Lord God. Ah, I didn't even know I have this. Uh, it's because <laughs> this, they just use the candle to search it out. <laughs> right? Because, see, your soul is a man. It cannot know the things of man. It means that your soul in itself does not even know itself. Finish. They're saying that the only thing that guarantees the searching out of all of the soul it's this the, what, what promised the out the searching and of its entirety is your spirit. So your spirit helps you, is what is the candle of the Lord, is the masterpiece that can search all. But can you not see that we need our spirit? We can depend on it because without it, we can't even know ourselves, honestly. So, for what man did it save the spirit of man which is in him? So, when they say that the heart of man is, see. Says the, the the heart of man is deceitful in all things, and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is who can know it. It is the spirit of man that search all the inward parts. Is the one that knows. So even so, the things of God know it. No man, but the spirit of God. You see the merging I was talking about. That even so, these things of God knoweth no man. Means that these things of God cannot move into man. But the Spirit of God can move into man. And also, the Spirit of God can bring the things of God into the Spirit of man for the soul of man. You see here the interaction. So, the gateway to the Lord is your Spirit. Your Spirit is what allows you to Contact the Lord. So when the Lord is looking at you, when the Lord wants to operate salvation, you come bam up, phone up a Siena. He moves into, he moves down, looks into your spirit. Then it's with, the, with your spirit, the candle. He said, Ah, this is the one we are dealing with today. The Lord knows that it's your spirit because your spirit knows you. It can't come to your body, it can't come to your soul. It comes to your spirit. Eventually, because of your spirit, we can know the Lord. He knows your soul. He knows your body. But the Lord, you know, the Lord is, does not do anything half as hardly. It is a design. Architect. Master architect. The Lord designed it such that your spirit, he can use it to know you. To know all the things that Satan has embedded. All the things, secret things that even where Satan has kept things. This is where you should be excited and joyful to the Lord. That no matter what work has been done in my soul, there is a salvation program with the Lord has put in my spirit. You know, this thing is making up to save our spirit. Be pals with your spirit, I beg you. You 
Be power with your spirit. I think I'll stop here. His spirit is the candle. So, Pastor Ceci, when he comes back, you, you take us further. And then we'll see the rest. Amen. Are we blessed tonight? So, let's, let's thank Jesus for our spirit. You know, with this, there's a, there's a, what I'm seeing here is that we have a, a surety of salvation. Thank God for our spirit. You know, if it's left to our soul alone, honestly, there, there's, no, there's no certainty that we'll come to the uttermost. But the Lord has, has put mercy upon his word. He gave us Christ in our spirit. He recreated our spirit. Christ. Thank God for not doing it. Can we just thank Jesus for not doing a refurbishing? But for him doing a recreation of our spirit. Don't thank God for his wisdom over our life. Manofa kau sizene. Erene hele dom sianom pihatu fana. Jende karaki haka no safina. Emproza ne hatila zana. Koyenenda paye masata fana. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Thank you, Father, for the mercy of your wisdom, which are the architect of our spirit, soul, and body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for recreating our spirit, for not refurbishing it, for not just retouching it, but for making sure it is formed after Christ. Thank you, Father, for the provision of our spirit, or even the wisdom kept in it for to search out all things. When it be in the candle, thank you. We give you all the praise. Can we begin to pray that the Lord will just help us to be much more in touch with our spirit, to be much more inclined with our spirit? You see, this aspect we must, must we must, our our heart must must see our our spirit clearly. I know a lot of us know this, but the Lord is still helping us. Now. There's nothing wrong in knowing more, right? But I want us to pray that the Lord Jesus will help us to begin to know even our body, our spirit, rather, our spirit clearly. We begin to see, we begin to, 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 to be proud that the Lord will give help to, to remove all enmity inside of our spirit in a matter thank you jesus we give you all the praise thank you father for in jesus precious name we have prayed amen father we thank you thank we you, give you all the praise thank for tonight we thank you for the blessing of your spirit even elevating our spirit more much more showing us our spirit making it even more clear the importance of our spirit even in the work of salvation we say we are exalted in jesus name Amen. As we go about this week, as we go about our day, we ask, Father, that you will pour out your blessing upon Amen. us. Lord, that you will increase even our sensitivity spiritually concerning our spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, that all that we've not known, that there will be an outpour of mercy, but Amen. no more. That Amen. all misunderstanding around our spirit will be removed. That there will be Amen. clarity and there will be grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because Amen. you've answered our prayers. We Amen. give you all the praise. For Amen. in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.